Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. Big Biz Show's on the air. Greg Totter, our executive producer, in studio. Mike Costa. Hello. Uh, as well as Sully. And, of course, the DTC guys. Give me a little, give me a little love over there. One, two, three, four. Hey, Jordan, did I hear you played with James Brown? I did, yes. Okay, okay. That, you can't be that humble. Like, I would say, yes, yeah, step back, I want to kiss myself. Uh, I actually played that song. Did you, <laughs> the one that you just played? Yeah. Play it again. Play it again. One, Play it again. Two, three, four. Get up. Get on up. up. Bottom ten yourself. Come on. Okay, so so here's the deal. How did get you up. get how did you get that gig? Through Dave Matthews. Oh, of course. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. You, already, you, already, you already got my Apple computer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. through Bill yeah. Gates' new Steam job. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Kirkham. Yeah. Okay, how did you get the Dave Matthews gig? I was playing with Carl Dentz's Tiny Universe, and we were on tour with Dave Matthews opening. Okay, mm -hmm. who doesn't want to come back in their next life as Brian Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. He's cool looking, he can play the guitar. Oh, man. Well, I'll uh, come back and uh, I got to listen to him all day. I got the Dave Matthews gig because when I was with the Stones, uh, uh, Mick, Mick said, hey, Brian, yeah. come on, yeah. you should meet my friend Dave. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, of course. Three unbelievable musicians up there for the daycare here. Uh, Maram Makunda uh, represents one of my favorite things that happens on the show. When people, uh, uh, television audience members and or radio audience members, will text or uh, email Greg Totteroff, our executive producer, and say, hey, you should see this company. It's something you want to talk about. And, of course, we conduct due diligence to find out uh, who might be the best pick for you guys in the audience. Uh, we have come up with Rob Makunda, founder, chairman, and CEO of a company called IGC Pharma. Their stock symbol, what do you think it would be? Uh, ALZH or AL... I'm going to go with IGC. I mean, the name of the company, IGC Pharma, what would, yeah, of course, it would be, IGC Pharma wouldn't be, it would be ALCH. So, representing ALCH today, Ram Makunda. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clear that up right now. The stock symbol is IGC. Oh, would you, have you had your break? I, no. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I took a stab. I missed. It happens. That's not a stab. No. No, that, that's, that, that would be like uh, uh, you, don't get, you don't get evicted because it's a matter of insanity. You can't even be tried. <laughs> uh, Rob, nice to have you, sir. Uh, I want to talk about um, what you are doing in the world of Alzheimer's disease because I can tell you I've got a 95-year-old dad who's a pisser. Oh, uh, oh he, no, he's, uh, it's all there. I've got an 85-year-old mother. And you can't help but think, Mom, did she just repeat again? Um, and, and, and I probably jumped to conclusions, but, it, but it's a concern. So talk to us about Alzheimer's. Talk about what IGC is doing for Alzheimer's. Hey, thank you, Sally, and thank you, Mike. Um, appreciate you having me on this show. The um, interesting thing about Alzheimer's is that the, it, the, the disease really starts about 20 years before symptoms set in. And there are two hallmarks. One is the deposit of plaques, and the other is what's called neurofibrillary tangles. And these plaques, what they do is they, they're deposited between neurons and they cut off the circuitry. The other is tangles, which are within neurons and they kill the neuron. So this starts to happen about 20 years before you get any kind of symptoms. So this might start in your 50s and by there, by the time you get to 70 or 65, you start seeing these symptoms. Asking for a friend, uh, suppose you're in your early 60s and you start forgetting things uh, like everything your wife said. Um, is that a precursor to <laughs> Alzheimer's? Or are, are there, like, can I, do I know if I should phone it in now? Are there any sort of uh, symptoms that I should know about other than being uh, cranky and a little short-tempered? <laughs> no, but what you say about memory is very interesting. If you lose memory and you can't remember things, but if you could remember them, if, for example, if there's a trigger and you remember them, then it's just, you've just, you know, forgotten. But even given a trigger, you forget. For example, let's say you walk down to get the mail 
and you walk down to wherever the mailbox is. You remember to get there, you get there, but then you don't remember why you got there. Actually, it's more like this. It's like I walk down to get the mail, and I can't remember why I'm upset at my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so <laughs> with the, then we've been enjoying our last and, show. And by the, way, <laughs> right. by the way, in the Alzheimer's world, how are we doing as a country? How are we doing as a, as a world in attacking this? Are we five feet out of the parking lot on a, on a 20 mile hike or are we getting somewhere in your opinion? You know, it's a very exciting time. There are about eight drugs that are approved for Alzheimer's. Five of them are for, for essentially enhancing memory. There are about three of them that have been approved for the disease itself. So, and there's only one, there's two that's been approved for the disease, one more coming by the end of this year. So this is a very exciting time. This is an exciting year where all of these drugs are getting approved for the disease. Yeah, that's, that's, fantastic. Only... that's fantastic. I'm hopped up on Windex and some hair gel right now, so I'm using it as preventative medicine for everything. <laughs> uh, Mike had a question. Uh, Rom, when it comes to, I'm a big walk into the room guy and then stop and say, what the hell was I? Why, why did I come in here into the into the room? All those. Were you honestly asking yourself, "Oh my God, why did I even come here? I hate you people." Or, that's or, 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 or was it? <laughs> where, where am I? Uh, well, and then the doorbell rings and it actually hasn't rung. I'll get it. And yeah. there's no doorbell. But the, you know, you see all the, the the memory drugs on the market over the counter. The hey, this is going to improve your memory. This is going to help your memory. Is that complete snake oil, or do they actually work? You know, there's a, there's a whole area called nootropics, and that's what you're referring to. There are, there are these are memory enhancers. They help you remember stuff. Some of them work. Some of them don't work. It just depends on the individual. Look, if, the, if the ingredient has basil in it, or or honestly, like mushroom oil extract. Yeah. Um, first of all, I love my one of my best my best friend in the whole world, James East, is a little bit of a hippie. He's a Western medicine guy. He's rubbing on patchouli on his knuckles, like the whole thing. And I know he believes in, uh, in uh, if there's basil in it, it's going to work. Do you know what works? Drugs work. <laughs> that are like the stuff that, like pills and stuff. So this is why I love biopharma companies. I don't go for the Eastern medicine stuff. I go for the Western biopharma. Uh, let's talk about IGC and what you guys are, are doing to advance uh, treatment for Alzheimer's disease. You know, you talk about uh, herbs and you talk about these different uh, plant-based medications. It's interesting because what we're doing is we're testing, and this is based on seven, eight years of research. Um, a, you, you've all heard of cannabis, you know marijuana. There's the psychoactive component of marijuana, which is THC. So what we're testing, believe it or not, is THC along with another molecule, which in years of preclinical data has shown that it can actually dissolve or interfere with the creation of plaques in your brain. Interesting. And also, and also much more than that, it can also decrease the tangles that are in, in, in the brain. So these are two hallmarks of Alzheimer's. And this particular combination can actually attack both of these hallmarks. So this is a very big deal. Now, the secret to this is in the dosing. If you take too much THC, obviously you get high. You're really hungry. <laughs> Right? There's, so there's like, exactly. But if the dosing is micro dosing, then it behaves completely differently. Because look, we have we know that we as humans have cannabinoid receptors. We know that this is almost like an aspirin wonder drug, at least if you believe what the research is on cannabis and THC and C B D over the last ten years. Uh, in your opinion, as a scientist, are are, are you believing that we are now beyond the tip of the spear, and now we're finding out the real story about it, and it's actually, the, the myth is actually real, or is it too soon to tell? No, absolutely. I think the myth is very real. We've seen this in preclinical data. We ran a phase one study where we had tri where, where we ran a trial with three different doses of THC plus this other molecule in a liquid solution where individuals would take it once a day, twice a day, and three times a day. And I'd like to sign up for the three times a day uh, group. Um, uh, here, so here's my question. What is the difference chemically between taking THC and the gin study that the three of us are doing with aviation gin? Um, so I, I, honestly, it, it's a psychotro uh, liquor is a psychotropic, right? Is that the only call? It, it, it's it, the it, 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 receptors. You but, talked about cannabinoid receptors and that's really what it's about. Yeah. It's about binding the, to the cannabinoid receptors in your system. You know, gin doesn't bind to those receptors, whereas THC does, CBD does. So that is what this is about. So it acts like a medication. Don't forget that aspirin came from a tree bark. 
So it's not unusual to get medications that come from plants. It is, such a, shame, it, it is such a shame that gin does not... Uh, uh, we'll keep trying, though. How's tequila, by the way? Just kidding. Uh, Bam, Ram, I would like to invite you back because I sort of feel like where you guys are going on the arc of the story with the FDA is really considerably uh, um, uh, encouraging. And also, this seems like uh, the only lane for Alzheimer's these days because no one has hit it yet. I mean, you, you even have uh, treatments for pancreatic cancer. You have treatments for liver cancer. You've got treatments for uh, dementia. But you don't have a treatment yet for Alzheimer's, and this seems like it's as close as we can get, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Come back with us, man. I appreciate it. His stock symbol, IGC. And the name of the company? IGC Pharma. Get on up.